Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're doing a guide for Cross the Obelisk. This is a beginner's guide. Uh, this is the assumption that this is your, your first playthrough or uh, just within the first couple of times you have questions about some of the basic fundamentals of the game. There are a lot of moving pieces here, so we'll cover all those basics there. Uh, I do uh, work for tips, so if you feel so inclined, there's a little heart below the... Uh, the, the screen here above the comments section that uh, that can happen. Otherwise, I do work well on, on praise and feedback. So please let me know what you like about this guide, any other questions you have afterwards, and I will be happy to answer those and or improve in future videos. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, Across the Obelisk is a roguelite deck builder. Those are some technical terms that uh, you may or may not be familiar with. There are a couple play modes. A couple of them are locked on your first playthrough. Adventure mode is basically the, the story or campaign. Uh, Obelisk challenge is going to be a more of a pre -generate, uh, procedurally generated uh, kind of random scenario. You don't have any as much control over your deck starting deck and some of the that the crafting information there. You're just kind of playing by the seat of your pants in this one, winging it as you go along. And then weekly challenge is taking that random format, setting it into a uh, consistent, it'll generate one for the week, and then everyone competes for the highest score for that specific seed of the random generator. So uh, most of this video is going to be talking about adventure mode and how to get through that. So in your first game, you're going to only have access to the first four characters and they're all gonna be level zero, rank zero, and uh, you won't have access to some of the stuff I will show you, but I will walk you through how to get them and what they are. So the object of this game is to progress through the maps to the final boss and defeat the final boss. You do so by going through story events or combats. All the combats, the, the goal is to uh, eliminate the enemies, their, their hit points to zero, and your team needs to stay alive to do so. Uh, and any damage you take in each fight will carry over to the next one. So that's why there's a lot of healing involved in this game. You want to make sure that between fights, your team is, is sitting here at max hit points and that you uh, don't suffer too many injuries along the way. We'll get back to combats a little later, but as I said, the goal is to progress through the maps to the end. It involves a lot of fighting and combats, and you use your, your decks of cards. You start with 15 cards in your deck, and that is the minimum amount of cards you can have. Uh, You'll, you'll start with those cards and your, your biggest pro progression or ability to improve your skill throughout a single run is to modify that deck. And uh, yeah, you'll do so with these towns. So uh, you'll, be, you'll be modifying this deck. You'll be gaining experience and leveling up and picking up some, some levels here. We'll talk about both those later. Uh, but the, this game is not intended to be completed on the first playthrough. Uh, you are not expected to beat it in the first uh, the first run. It is possible to do so, but that is usually done by experienced players that know which events and which nodes are happening and how the game is going to progress. This is a very much an exploratory experience. This is meant to kind of explore each node, all the characters, the story behind them, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, expect to, to lose the first couple of runs. Just get as far as you can and then come back here because each run will generate some what we call meta progression. Meta progression are things that will affect you from each run from like that'll benefit you between each run. So your next run, you'll be stronger. And as you level these up, uh, the game will become easier. And then you might eventually start unlocking the ability to make the game harder to compensate for it. So the first few runs, you're just trying to get as far as possible, get as much of this meta progression as possible so that your future runs can be easier. And uh, let's talk about those meta progressions. So as you I actually need to go back to a different screen here. As you play through each run, you will get experience for your characters. That experience will unlock these different. Um, where is it? Rank uh, ranks for the class. It's shared amongst all the warriors, all the scouts, all the mages. So as you level up, say Magnus is the starting warrior, that'll help your future warriors become stronger. And as you progress through these ranks, you'll get increases to your, your starting items, your starting cards, and uh, some of your talent cards, which I'll show you here in just a second. And you'll also unlock 
the ability for perks. This screen is a little, uh, little busy. Don't worry too much about it. I have guides for it in the future. Uh, but for the most part, you'll just kind of, you'll match the, you'll, you'll play the game a couple times. And as you play, you'll understand the different damage types and abilities that your character has. And you can just start allocating these points that you get to become stronger in those categories. Uh, if all those fails and you don't want to worry about this too much, just these four columns right here, gold shards, you can just go down this all the way and until you want to worry about the screen, that'll be a great way to just progress the thing. But that, like I said, this doesn't happen on your first run. This is future runs. This is one of the, the meta, the meta progressions. One of the things that you'll earn each run, you'll earn more points to it and eventually you'll max this out and this will affect you every run in the future uh, unless you disable it for intentionally trying to make things harder. So leveling up your character will get them perks. And this level up, I mean, the leveling up between games, not the leveling up in the game. Uh, so the farther you get in a run, the more points you'll get towards leveling up outside of the each run. And that'll help you increase the power of your character overall. And then it'll also increase these cards that I mentioned. Each character, they have a starting deck of 15 cards. And one of them is going to be a very hero specific card that has three different versions of it. And as your character levels up, you'll get stronger and stronger versions of it. Uh, don't worry too much about the details of them. Uh, we can go into that a little later. You'll also have an item that your character will start with that will have stronger versions as you level him up or that or them up. Uh, and uh, you can also unlock different skins with this meta progression. That doesn't affect the your ability to win the game, but it does affect the coolness of the game. And then last but not least... Uh, no, that's that's basically everything with the, the hero levels. Let's get back into the game and I'll show you some of the other meta progression. It all started in the princess's uh, with this. The um, as you have your decks, you're trying to modify them, make them stronger. We'll talk a little more about deck building in general and deck builders, but you'll have access to new cards. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of cards here that you don't have yet because I've unlocked them throughout the game. And to do so, you just have to get them as card wards uh, from combats. Um, and that's one of the other medic progressions. That one's a little more in depth and we'll talk about it near the end of the video. So you can unlock cards, you can unlock characters, you can unlock pets. Pets and characters, the way to, um, the way to unlock them is to go to different nodes. Like you see these little explanation points. These are new characters that you can unlock. You'll go to them, you'll do some uh, so interact with them. They'll tell you to do things or ask you to do things. And if you complete them, you'll unlock the character for future runs. Uh, similar thing with pets, except for they don't have these big explanation points. You have to find them through different events. And uh, like you'll, you'll find an event that has that pet in it. And if you do the proper sequence of events, you'll unlock that pet, pet uh, to buy in the town. Uh, and I think that mentions all of the, the meta progression, except for one last one here in the town, you have these different buildings. You have the magic forge, which allows you to, to craft new cards, add new cards to your deck. The church that allows you to remove cards from your deck, by the way, the, the best building in the town, <clears throat> hands down. You have this cart that allows you to randomly have a chance to pick a random card and add it to your deck. Like you'll give an option of three random cards and you'll pick one, pick one or none to put into your deck. Uh, and that, um, and then the armory, which allows you to buy items. So all these buildings, oh, sorry. And the altar that allows you to upgrade cards. All these buildings uh, start out at level one in early progression and they cost a lot of money to use. So one of the meta progressions is these town upgrades. You can get these supply crates you can see I have a very large quantity of them. Um, as you get them, you can unlock and upgrade your your town a little more. Uh, so say at the church, you know, it starts costing less gold to remove cards from your deck. Or at the cart, it starts costing less gold or you have access to stronger random cards. The armory, you can unlock stronger cards, that kind of stuff. So as you progress through these, it becomes easier to create a stronger and stronger deck so that you can progress farther into the game, uh, into the adventure each time you start a new game. So 
Where are we at here? Gotta look at my notes for a second. So those are all the meta progressions. I was really quick. Uh, of them, the easiest way to farm them. So the supplies, you just have to kill bosses or do events that uh, that give them to you. For the hero levels and the hero perks, you just have to get experience in the game that will transfer to the, the meta progression. So like the more events and the more combats and the farther along you get in the storyline, the, the more progression you'll get towards that. Uh, and then card unlocks, you just have to basically do more combats and they'll start to show up more often and you'll just get more experience with them. It's just so you're not bombarded with all of them at once. You'll kind of they'll kind of trickle in and then you'll start searching for the final ones by just playing more. And the farther you get in the game, the the stronger cards will show up and so the, those will unlock the strong the stronger cards you can't unlock unless you get further along into the game. So that's kind of a, a kind of a buffer there. And then the characters and pets, you just have to explore very specific events and very specific choices to unlock them. And there's whole guides that'll show you how to get them once if if you if you have a particular one you're looking for that you want to try to unlock. So that's that. That's all there is about the the meta progression. Uh, let's talk about some of the the resources you have in town. So in town, you have up top here, you have gold and shards. I don't have much of it to begin with. And you also have supplies. Supplies will carry over from run to run. Golden shards do not. But supplies, once you have the town fully upgraded, you can sell for golden shards. So I now have I spent the resource. So that's one way to get more resources in a run from a previous run. Uh, I don't recommend doing that until you have all of these unlocked. Another way to get resources in a run from a previous run is these treasure chests over here. So these stack up whenever I complete a run, I get a new one and then I can redeem it uh, in my next run for the equivalent amount of golden shards that it says here. So now I, you know, I pick this. Would you like to claim this? Bam. It's a one time reward. The treasure chest is now gone, but that was a previous run gave me these resources and that amount that I got was based on how far I got. So you might be noticing a trend here like. You're just pushing as far as you can to get resources for your next run. And you'll keep pushing until the point that you start to complete the run. And then as you complete the run further and further, you might start, uh, you'll get strong enough that you can increase the difficulty. But to begin with, don't expect to get to the end. Just to get as far as you can. And then these resources will be available from your future runs to progress further. Uh, eventually, both the supply selling, both this selling supplies and these treasure chests, uh, don't become an option that you can use anymore, but that's completely voluntary if you're increasing the difficulty of the game. Uh, at these base difficulties, those are always available uh, as an option for you to use these golden shards. Uh, we haven't quite explained what we use them on yet, so let's get to that. And gold can be used at the item shop to get items that increase the effects of your cards in your deck. Uh, I guess, you know, hopefully you've seen a look at the cards before you see this video, but... Uh, you know, each each card will have a different effect. This one says has slashing damage symbol. This one has block. This one, you know, has slow and vulnerable. So these items can affect those things. You know, this one says lightning and spark. This one says, you know, block and fortify. You'll get used to the symbols and the names. There's a glossary that you can look at here in the Toma Knowledge. So you can always go click up at this. Uh, it'll show you, you know, your stats. You can go here to look at look up at cards. You can look up items. Oh, I got things written in here. And then you can go to this glossary and that'll explain all the different symbols to you if you have anything. As you can see, there are a lot of symbols, so I understand there's a lot going on. Just pick, you know, look them up as they come up to you, as they come up in your game. Don't worry too much about them uh, until then. You might see some of the monsters doing them before you and you might have to look them up as well. Um... Yeah, so the, the gold can be spent on the item shop. It can also be used to buy pets. Pets are basically just another item slot for you to fill. Uh, you can use gold at the cart for the random cards. You know, I pick some gold here. It gives me a bunch of card choices. And I can choose to add these to my deck or not add them to my deck. And if I don't add them, I get shards. And shards are used to buy cards and to upgrade cards. So I use shards at the forge and the altar to buy an upgrade. And you can also just straight buy an upgraded version here of the card. And as I buy them, they're added to my deck. 
as they're added to my deck, my deck gets bigger, and uh, odds are you'll probably want to start removing some cards. Mine, because I have the upgraded church, are free. Early on, they'll cost you gold. So gold is used as a resource as well as the church to remove cards. I, I know there's a lot of information fast. Hopefully, uh, I'm not flooding you too quickly. Please take the second to, uh, to see if there's any questions you have and ask them in the comments. I'll try to try to answer as many of those as I can. Uh, I'm going to look at my notes here in a second, make sure we got everything covered uh, in the town. And then finally, we're going to get to the decks, which is the most important part of the, the strength of our characters as we progress. Okay, so in any given combat, we're going to draw five cards on our turn and gain three energy. That energy is used to play the cards, and depending on what cards we draw is what you know is going to happen. Some of these cards are attacks that will deal damage to the enemy. Some are blocks or have other effects. Some put debuffs on the enemy. Some other ones draw us cards. And they all have a rarity, and for the most part, the lower the rarity, the worse it does. When I go crafting things, the rarities are up here. We can't craft mythics in the starting town. We can't craft epics. We can craft rares on the lower difficulties if you've unlocked them. I don't think you have any... Not You don't really have many unlocked by default, but as you unlock them, you can craft them in towns. There is a town uh, on every map, and you have to go through four maps. So you'll, you'll come back to the towns more often. Um, as I said, like the higher rarity of a card, the, the better the effect for the most part. It's not always exactly true depending on the effect, but that gives you a good guide of, hey, these blank borders are probably not as strong as these ones with the green symbol, blue symbol, etc. Um, and just kind of aim for the effect that you're looking to get done. Uh, you'll find the preferences of the cards you like best. Uh, I have whole guides about specific characters and what cards to get for them. If you want to look at those, those are a little overwhelming uh, for some new players, so don't be too stressed about it. Uh, I highly recommend you bring your cards down to 15 cards, removing any extra ones so that you have a 15 card deck. And that's because of how deck builders work. And let's get into a combat so I can explain how kind of deck builders are different than any of some other card games you might be interested in or you might have played i mean so in a deck builder you're not given one card a turn as like a, a typical card game you normally draw one card a turn or you keep your cards from turn to turn in a deck builder you're given multiple at once and any that i don't use so i'm gonna you know i'm gonna cast a couple of these cards or play a couple of these cards, and then once I start running out of energy or I stop playing cards, I end my turn, and all of those are now in his discard. So if I go back to him, all of those are in his discard, and he has a fresh new hand now. And like, no one has any cards in their hand unless it's their turn. They draw X amount, and then they discard anything else at the end of the turn. And as I'm playing the cards, some of them are attacks, some of them are defenses, and then once I'm out of energy, basically all I have left to do is end your turn. Up top here is a turn order. Uh, this is based on the speed of your characters. It's a whole other thing that we don't really have to get into too much on our first couple of runs. Uh, but with the deck builder, as you can see, because the cards are random and I'm given a large chunk all at once, the more cards I have in my deck, the less likely I'll draw specific ones. And in any given deck, you're going to want to... You're going to want to... Uh, What's the word? Some cards are going to be stronger than others. Like in this Magnus deck, this this pink one, this one's really good. It draws a card, it gives me energy. It It's a really strong card overall. But the more cards I have in my deck, the less likely I'll draw this. So the smaller your deck is, the more consistently you'll draw your best cards. So the idea is when you add cards to your deck, you want them to be better than about half the cards in your deck. So if I... If, um, I go finish a combat and I get the card rewards from it. I want to make sure that those rewards are something that is improving my deck overall. Like if it's only better than like my bottom couple cards, then it's not a good card to pick up because it lowers the chance of me drawing my best cards later. And I'm just quickly going through this combat. I apologize. I just kind of want to show you that that card reward screen here in a second. And while I'm doing that, I can explain some other things about the combat. So if you see up top here, 
I have this little meter that says excellent, great, good. And you can see these little modifiers on how much gold and experience I get. That little star symbol is experience. And it also says card tiers. Because at the end of every combat, I'm going to be given experience based on how well I performed. I'm going to be given gold and I'm going to be given the uh, some card rewards. But this is all, of course, assuming I did well enough to earn that version of the rewards. So I'm not going to be able to finish in round. In ra I'm now in round two, so I'm getting less of a reward once I finish this combat. Which I'll do here shortly. And you can see, so over here, the enemy's got all these debuffs on the bottom. Uh... Again, pick and choose which ones you want to learn what they do so that you can uh, kind of pace yourself on the, the learning experience because there are so many buffs and debuffs. But once I finish a combat, based on how well I did, I will get better rewards. And as I add a card to my deck, you're going to want to kind of compare or have a good idea of how good their deck is to begin with. Like, if I can find something that does better than 10 damage for 1 energy, I'll probably pick it up. This one says 2 energy for... I can hit three targets is what it says. That was pretty fun. I like this one. I like it better than all of my defense, probably. And maybe my intercepts. Which, you know, card evaluation is this whole nother beast. But uh, that's that's, that's kind of what I want. These ones, on a card, it also at the bottom says what, what type of attack it is. And if you get familiar with each character, you learn that some of them have things for specific types of attacks or cards or defenses and stuff. And so Andrin here is one of the starting character. He has the option for either a ranged attack mastery or a melee attack option. And when you're going down these talents, you pick one or the other. So if I'm going for this melee one, I don't want any of these ranged attacks. I want just this melee attack right here. So that's when I'll pick it up. But I'm not just going to I'm just not going to add every card to my deck because if I'm adding bad cards, my deck gets worse and I perform worse and I will be not doing as well in the combats as I progress through the game. I, I uh, think that honestly covers everything I want to talk about in this first, uh, this, this beginner's video. I know I talked about a lot. They're all over the place. The, my biggest sum up is that as you play, just try to farm some of that, that meta progression as you're learning the game and get your character stronger. And as they get stronger, you'll start to, um, you'll also be getting more familiar with the, the concepts in the game and the abilities and the kind of, uh, just the play patterns of, of cards and characters and stuff like that. And it'll all come together to be a stronger team as you slowly progress. So just kind of take your time, pace yourself, uh, one thing at a time. There's a lot to learn and a lot to do, but as you get more ranks, You'll get these perks, and which is another thing to learn, but these perks say things like plus more slashing damage. So your character will start to do more damage and you'll progress further and farther. And they eventually, until you get to the point that uh, you start increasing the difficulty. And I have I have an entire video about the difficulties. Uh, it goes all the way from 0 to, to 16. And once you're getting these madness cards, I mean, these these once you get to level 1 madness, uh, you'll start to see purple cards, which are even stronger versions of cards. And you'll see purple items, and you'll see monsters will start to have super effects of... You could start the combat where all the monsters are doing more damage and stuff. So there's a lot of layers that you can add as you progress through the madnesses, but that, uh, that can come as slow or fast as you'd like it to. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. I am happy to answer them. Uh, I hope this information is helpful. And, uh, yeah, the bets, uh, there are plenty of guides. Uh, I'm trying to get a guide for every character done here in the next couple of weeks. I have a lot of them done. I'll, I'll have things about madnesses and how to pass through the things. So, basically, if you have a question about Across the Obelisk, odds are I have a video either made or in the works. And I am always happy to help answer uh, via comments and the likes. Uh, we'll catch you later. Peace.